Hi, my name is Wendy Liu. It is my pleasure to be uh, here as one of the speakers at the Lex Matter Week. And I am a chartered physiotherapist, and I am also a lymphedema specialist therapist working at Accelerate. Um, today, we will look at how exercises can keep your legs healthy, what are the common leg problems, and what are some factors that increase the chances of someone having the leg disease. Um, how we can make doing the exercises as part of our daily routine and hopefully in the future that you have decided to do more, more exercises to keep you healthy and also keep your um, mentally like well-being. Okay, so enjoy the presentation. Thank you. Hi, my name is Wendy Liu. I am the lymphedema specialist therapist at Accelerate. Today I will talk about how exercises can help keeping your legs healthy. Today, we will look at how our circulation works, common leg problems, and what factors make a person more chance of having the leg disease, what is physical activity, and how it helps to keep our legs in good health, how we can make doing leg exercises as part of our daily routine, and some take-home messages that hopefully will encourage you to exercise for healthier legs and a healthier you. The human body needs good circulation to carry oxygen, nutrients, and hormones to cells, and remove waste products like carbon dioxide. This system consists of the cardiovascular system and the lymphatic system, which we will not cover today. The cardiovascular system is a closed system of vessels, including arteries, veins, and capillaries. They are all connected to a muscular pump called the heart. The arteries are elastic, muscular. They sustain high pressure to deliver oxygen-rich blood from the heart to the rest of the body parts. Veins are less elastic, they sustain low pressure, and they have valves to the inside of the vessel wall to prevent backflow of blood. They carry oxygen poor blood back to the heart for oxygenation. Veins need muscle movement to help blood returning to the heart, so-called venous return. There are three types of veins in the venous system, superficial veins, perforator veins, and deep veins. This picture shows how the valves open and close to keep the one-way direction of blood flowing back to the heart. However, when your veins don't work, the blood goes backwards, leading to a condition called venous reflux or venous insufficiency. The valves become weak, there will be pulling of blood in the affected area, creates higher than normal pressure in the veins when standing. It has been estimated that 500 ml of blood can gather in the legs when we are in an upright position. Persistent venous hypertension results in enlarged blue or red blood vessels visible on the skin. They also form bumps on the skin surface, like the picture above showing the so-called vertical veins. What increases your risk or chances of your veins not working? Venous disease has a strong genetic component. If your parents or your grandparents have varicose veins, swollen legs, venous leg ulcers, past medical history of previous trauma, blood clots in the veins and stiff ankle, female hormones fluctuation during menstruation, pregnancy and menopause weaken the inside wall of the veins. Although venous disease can affect men and women of all ages, it has been reported that the prevalence of chronic venous insufficiency ranges between 25 and 40 percent in women, 10 and 20 percent in men. As you become older, your collagen production also decreases, making the vessel walls become weaker. High BMI occupation involves long periods of sitting or standing. When you sit down for too long, your blood circulation becomes slower due to lacking of muscle movement. However, if you do the opposite, standing for too long, your veins need to work really hard against the gravity to move the blood back to our heart. Factors highlighted in red are those you can modify to reduce your risk of developing venous disease in your leg. Now, let's look at the arteries and how they get blocked. As you can see, a normal artery is clear of plaque. However, when you have high cholesterol, it can lead to building up a plaque in the arteries, making the channel become narrow over time. The blood cannot flow to the body parts which supplies easily, 
causing tissue damage, ulceration, and even amputation in the worst case scenario. When the blockage is in the brain arteries, it can result in a stroke. When it is in the leg arteries, it can lead to peripheral arterial disease. What increases your chance of developing PET? The risk factors for PET are family history and medical history of cardiovascular disease or stroke, having high blood pressure, high cholesterol, and type 2 diabetes. Smoking accelerates the process of arteries blockage and thickens the blood, making it difficult to pass through the already narrowed arteries. According to the National Institute for Health and Care Excellence 2019, PET is uncommon in younger people but increases with age. Evidence showing that about 20% of people aged over 16 years have some degree of PET, whereas men and postmenopausal women have a similar prevalence of PET, although men are more likely to present with more severe symptoms. By controlling and cutting out those factors highlighted in red, you can reduce your risk of developing PET. How often do you think about your leg health? Does it matter to you to have healthy legs? If your answer is yes, you have made a good start to take control of your leg's health. And it is never too late to start being active or becoming more active. The common risk factors for venous and arterial disease are increasing age and having a sedentary lifestyle. We cannot change our age, but we can move more to gain better health. As you can see on the curve, people who are not regularly active can achieve the most benefits of doing some physical activity. Even with small bouts of fewer than 10 minutes accumulated over the day and week, we provide health benefits. It is never too late to take charge of your own leg health with simple regular leg exercises. What counts as physical activity? Physical activity is defined as any bodily movement produced by skeletal muscles that requires energy expenditure. It takes many forms, occurs in many settings, and has many purposes. Examples are we do daily activity like gardening, carrying heavy grocery, and hoovering. And when we engage in active recreation and sports like walking, cycling, basketball, table tennis, and running. To get the full benefits of exercise, we have to do different types of exercises regularly to keep our body at its best, including cardiovascular exercise, strengthening exercise, and balance training. A good example is simple leg exercises can improve leg symptoms from vertical pains. Another example is a structured walking program can reduce leg pain in the people who suffer from pets. If you have long-term health condition, it might be daunting just thinking about how to start. I will talk you through some simple leg exercises to aid your venous return, improve your blood circulation, and strengthen your leg's muscles. Exercise is only part of the management of your venous or arterial disease. You will need to control and cut off the risk factors by other means, such as lifestyle changes, medication, or even with surgical treatment. Before you exercise, make sure that you feel well and well hydrated. If you feel more tired and have more joint pain on the day, simply reduce the intensity of the exercise so that you can still do some. Wear comfortable clothes and shoes, warm up gently, listen to your body. Build up the intensity of the activity over a period of time and find a physical activity which you enjoy to do and be creative on where and how to do it. Let's talk about how leg exercises can improve the circulation in your legs. There are three muscle pumps in the leg, one in the thigh, one in the calf, and one in the bottom of your foot. If you have ankle restriction and weak leg muscles, these muscle pumps will not work efficiently. How blood returns in the veins? When we take a step, no heel toe movement will move our ankle joints into dorsiflexion, followed by plantar flexion. Calf muscles fire and squeeze the deep veins, returning venous blood from the lower leg to the upper leg, the abdomen, and back to the right atrium of the heart. The change of pressure in our abdomen and chest helps blood flowing from the abdomen to the heart. 
Therefore, the cuff muscle pump is the basic mechanism for venous return, and ankle joint movement is the key biomechanical element in a functioning cuff pump. Physical activities will increase your heart rate and breathing. However, if you experience symptoms of heart attack, like chest pain, feeling fainted, feeling nauseous with cold sweat, significant shortness of breath in proportional to the activity you are performing, you need to stop exercising and seek urgent medical care. In addition, ask your doctor for more specific advice if you have had recent major surgery, recent DVT, PE, and have pre-existing heart condition. In the following video clips, I will show you how to accommodate simple exercises in our daily life. It is never too busy to move your legs. Wendy, it looks like you're having some problems with your legs. Yes, my legs are really, really achy and tired. What is the problem? I was like, standing in the kitchen just for two hours. I used to cook meals for 10 people. What's wrong with my legs now? Sometimes when we stand for long periods of time, it affects our venous return. So what should I do then? Well, some people find doing a few lower limb exercises helps get the muscles to pump that fluid up and out the leg. Shall we try some? Okay, but I have to reply an email quickly. Is it okay? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. These okay. don't really take very much attention at all. Okay. So the first one with your feet flat on the floor, go up onto your tiptoes and yeah. down again. Try and keep it nice and slow, really pointing your toes like a ballerina. Well done. Like Brilliant. How does that feel? That's good. That really works on my calf muscles. Excellent. Ooh. So the next one, if you could just raise one leg up off the floor slightly, and then you're going to point your toes up towards your nose and down again. Yep. And keep going down and up. Remember, nice and slowly. Slowly. That's okay. it. And then okay. if you're doing well with that, try some ankle rotations round and round. Okay. Brilliant. Okay. Is that pretty easy? Yeah, yeah, it's really, really easy. I can carry on with my email. Excellent. Yes. Well, if you want to make it a bit harder, try raising your leg a little bit higher. Remember to keep your back nice and straight, though. Like yep, okay. and keep going with your ankle movements. Nice. Excellent. So it's pretty easy. Okay, let's try this leg. Ooh, okay, done. Right. <gasps> I need to call my pastor now, otherwise I will be late. Okay, well just before you go, how about we try some marching on the spot? Okay. Take it nice and slow. How does that feel? Yeah, it is very, very easy. Does it really work? It does, but if you want to make it a bit harder for yourself, try and raise your knees a bit. Oh, okay. So you can do that for up to a minute on the spot, or if you're in a hurry, maybe you should get to the kitchen. Yeah, let's go march. Bye, Wendy. Hi Wendy. Hi Anna, how are you? Great, thanks. How are you? I'm good. Do you want a cup of tea? Would love one, please. Okay, let's get some cups out and biscuits. Let, yeah, why not? It's great to see that you're still doing your calf exercises. Yes, my clinician asked me to do this every half an hour. That's I helpful. I sit for a really, really long time, every time. Excellent. Oh, let's put the kettles on. It's getting really, really boring to do this exercise. I suppose they're quite repetitive and if you're just doing one, it could get a bit boring. Why don't we try doing another exercise to mix it up? What would that be then? Okay, well, if you just stand facing the kitchen counter, yeah. feet are hip width apart yeah. and toes pointing forward, yeah. if you could just stabilise yourself on the yeah. kitchen counter by yeah. holding on. Okay. And then you're going to lower your knees gently, but knees not ever going over the toes. Try and keep your weight in your heels. That's perfect. And then back up again and lower yourself down as if sitting into an invisible chair. That's brilliant. You're keeping your back nice and straight as well, which is really good. How does it feel? Oh, it is like a whole body workout, but I know that it's worth it. It can feel a little bit tiring at first if you're not used to doing these exercises. So even if you just do a few each time you're making a cup of tea, it will soon mount up and give you such a good effect. 
Thank you, Anna. This is a good idea. Great. Thanks, Wendy. Thank you. For details on how to perform the leg exercises shown in the video just now, go to the Legs Matter website where you can download the exercise leaflet and watch the video made by Accelerate. A sedentary lifestyle minimizes the efficiency of calf muscle pump on venous return, causing higher venous pressure, increased risk of developing venous disease. Updated guidelines from UK Chief Medical Officers Physical Activity 2019 states that there is no minimum amount of physical activity required to achieve some health benefits. However, if you want to build up an exercise as a habit, aiming to do at least 10 minutes at a time can help you to achieve this goal in the long term. When you exercise more, your heart will get stronger, then you can do longer bouts of more focused exercise. National guideline also recommends people with Varicose veins to do light to moderate physical activity, such as walking and swimming, because strenuous exercise may worsen next symptoms. Work out the factors that worsen your symptoms and modify them. For example, if you experience leg pain after standing for an hour, you can reduce the chance of getting pain in your leg by taking sitting break and doing leg exercises every half an hour. What are moderate and vigorous intensity activities? The top test is a simple way to measure relative intensity. In general, if you are doing moderate intensity activity, you can still talk but cannot sing during the activity. If you are doing vigorous intensity activity, you have difficulty talking without pausing for a breath. If you want to get the full benefits of exercise, the national recommendation is doing at least 150 minutes of moderate intensity activities or at least 75 minutes of vigorous intensity or a combination of both together with some balance and strength trainings. I understand that fear of injury or making a health issue worse can be a barrier to undertaking activity, especially if you are not regularly active, are disabled, have a health condition are pregnant or are older or frail. However, the risk of adverse events from physical activity is relatively low and the health benefits gained from such activity outweigh the risk. If you have long-term health condition and you do not know how to start being active, you can visit the website on the right for more tips and inspiration. Thank you for staying up to the last slide and I'm sure that you are thinking of getting more active in your daily life. Before I close up the presentation today, I would like to encourage you with some take-home messages. Being active every day, and this is never too late to start. Breaking up sitting time with walking with some simple leg exercises, which is just simple and it is not rocket science. Some is good, more is better. Lastly, Healthy legs lead to happier life. Thank you. Thank you very much, Wendy. Um, that's fantastic. So uh, Wendy, unfortunately, couldn't uh, stay for the, the uh, Q&A afterwards, uh, which is a shame. But uh, so you've got uh, myself and Fran. Hi, Fran. Hello. Hi. How are you doing, Alison? I'm good, thank you. I was trying to do some of the exercises as she was... Uh, doing them with um, with Anna in the uh, the lounge area um, and uh, and sometimes I, th I sort of reflected really that we think that we have to maybe start a marathon or half a marathon or the couch for 5k however good that is it can stop us can't it from making the small steps actually that uh, Wendy was encouraging us to do. Um, yeah, indeed. I mean, there's so many things that you can just incorporate into your everyday life, even if you're spending a lot of time at home. Um, like Wendy did, you know, when you're making a cup of tea, when you're making a sandwich, when you're standing up, do a few of the, you know, heel raises. Um, when you're sitting, like Wendy did, she was doing two things at once. So, you know, you can do a few leg exercises during the day, a couple of times a day. Um, Another thing that I find is really helpful is to maybe put some music on and then that makes the time pass a little bit more if you're going to be doing a few things a couple of times a day. 
And it's really just about developing good habits and moving. It's about moving, not necessarily exercising. And if you're capable of doing that and you can, that's fine. But if you're a bit limited in your mobility, it's about just moving those legs, moving the body, you know, as many times as you can during the day. I was quite struck, um, you know, uh, when Anna and uh, Wendy were there doing their little exercise uh, routine was that it was about deliberate movements as well, wasn't it? Not sort of wiggling your ankle. Mm. It was stretching and deliberate and pulling and pushing. Um, and sometimes we think a sort of quick wiggle is enough, but actually something more defined is a, a good thing to do. Definitely. I mean, in, in one of the videos, Anna was saying really point your toes like a ballerina, and that's really going to help to get the contraction going in your calf muscle. Right. And that, that prolonged contraction with your toes really pointing down is going to make sure that all the fluid is moved in a very good kind of fast a lot of volume is coming out basically yeah. from, from, from the leg. Yeah. So yes, um, doing some strong contractions, if you can add body weight to it, then that's going to you know be even better. But yeah. yes, it's all about moving the ankle. That's another thing. The calf muscle pump is one of the things that we know that helps to move fluid from you know the, the, the leg up into the body. But you need to keep make sure that your ankle, you need to protect your ankle movement as well. So making sure that you always keep your, your ankles moving as much as possible. Um, and what can tend to happen is if you don't move it, you kind of lose it. It's that, you know, kind of um, saying, if you don't yeah. use it, you lose it. So again, the ankle movement is what helps to, you know, make the calf muscle contract. So it's really important to try and look after that. I mean, it's an interesting one, move it. If you don't move it, you lose it. But actually we know that we can gain it back to a certain extent. And so um, I, I was struck by one of Wendy's um, slides about peripheral artery disease. We call that PAD, but peripheral artery disease and the, the highlighted in red text, which mm. was these are the areas you can um, work on to reduce your risk. So I suppose the take home messages for me were one, if you want to have le better and healthier legs, you can do something about it now, right? You can start today in small ways and some of the bigger issues may be about smoking and so on. You can also, it, it depends on where we are, whether mm. we want to see change, isn't it? You know, do we really want to see change? Because if we do, then there's a good chance that could actually happen. Mm, absolutely. And what you were saying about um, pad, which is the, the blood that comes down into the foot, so the, what they call the arterial blood, um, you know, sometimes the arteries can become furred up and then we get a reduced circulation into our legs. But by moving, you can build what's called a collateral circulation. So what that means is your body building more vessels to bring that blood down into your foot to ensure that you're getting nutrients and oxygen down into your legs and feet. And again, it's very, very small, small steps that you need to do. Um, and yeah, things like smoking, preventable things that you could potentially um, look at improving your health with, you just need to reach out and ask for help. There's plenty of resources out there that can help you. Um, and if you don't, if you don't manage it the first time, you can just keep trying. Yeah. I know many people that have, have, you know, made adjustments with their weight, diet, smoking, and they may have not done it the first time, but they might have done it the third time. So just keep trying because it's all going to help. I would agree. I think it's the the turning up that's important. So in the um, q and I'm just looking here now. Um, swimming. Someone's asking about swimming. Such a good question. Is it good or bad? Um, lost the sound at one point when she talked about exercises. I worried the pressure in the pool made my veins more prominent. Pressure inside versus pressure outside. That's a great question. Um, the, the view on swimming is that actually it helps venous return very much. So the pressure outside um, to the, um, the author of that note there is really good. It should reduce edema. Am I right, um, Fran? Absolutely. And not only that, it's a very good cardiovascular workout. 
So it's not only going to help in that respect, it's also going to help with your heart function, it's going to help with your, your health in general. And, you know, anything that you can do to, if you're doing exercise, if you've got pain in your legs, it can help with that as well, because it's in a kind of a negative um, kind of, um, you're not putting a lot of pressure through the legs in, in, when you're doing the exercise. So in that, in that respect, it's, it's excellent for just all round health and also helping to move, you know, get your circulation moving as well. Brilliant. We've got a couple of um, questions here. One person is asking, can the, are these talks going to be archived? Absolutely, Sally, questioner. Um, these, um, what we're doing today is that you will have access to all the recordings from today. Um, and then um, each day will be taken uh, separately. So all the videos will be uh, um, uh, accessible from next week. So yes, they'll be watchable all through the year. We have another um, question, yeah. um, Fran. Can I read about, that out? Yeah, can you yeah. do that one? Sure, so um, an anonymous attendee's written, I have an intensive job where I need to be at a computer all day. I've noticed after a day of work that my leg symptoms are much worse. I've been referred to occupational health. I assume OH is occupational health. Mm -hmm but they asked me to get in touch with access to work to get a desk assessment. Mm -hmm. Do you have any tips for employees in terms of managing expectations slash reasonable adjustments at work? What do you think about that, Alison? Well, I think it's an interesting one. You brought in two things. One is that the symptoms, the leg symptoms are much worse after a day uh, behind the desk. And then the second is about uh, adjustments to mm -hmm. maybe your desk. So it strikes me that you may have two things going on. One is that your legs aren't moving enough. And so taking on board some of Wendy's exercises through the day and setting an alarm every mm -hmm. half hour to get moving, to go onto your tiptoes, um, do some um, uh, squats, as uh, Wendy was describing, I think it's really important. Um, if I work at home, I'm way more static than if I'm in my office today because I go and see people, I walk out, go and get a cup of coffee or whatever. Uh, if I'm working from home, then I'm definitely more static. So we have to be diligent about this. We can't just expect our bodies to cope with sitting for so long. It's not normal as humans have evolved. We would have been on the move all the time. It's just the last 20, 30 years where we've got this problem. But the other thing, and, and you may be better at this than me, Fran, mm -hmm. is about sitting at the desk. Having the right setup is really important. And from as an employee and an employer point of view, it is incumbent on us to do a desk assessment. Mm. I forgot what they're called now, but <laughs> you need to make sure that the chair is at the right level, that the keyboard is at the right level. So that's really about your back and, um, uh, and your thighs. Mm. Yeah, I think um, in terms of occupational health and, um, you know, access to work and things like that, then yes, they should, should, you should get a desk assessment. Um, and what Alison's saying is right. It's all about your posture, the chair that you're sitting on, making sure that when you get into work, that your chair is at the right level, that everything's comfortable, that your back is very comfortable, sat back into the chair, and that everything's kind of at right angles when you're sitting at the desk, when you're, when you're sitting in the chair, and also with your legs also when you're sitting. Um, another thing you can think about is some, employer, some employers will give you a, or give access to a standing desk. So there might be some, something that you can get an adjustment for that means that you don't have to sit down all day. You can actually stand up for periods. Yes, and up, up. yes. and they're really, really helpful. Um, and again, when you're standing up, you don't want to be standing up for hours on end doing work. Um, you know, you can bring the desk up and down or you can do some exercises when you're standing up. Um, but then that just means that you've got, got options then. So, um, but what Alison said is really good in terms of setting an alarm. It's really important every hour for your eyesight as well as just to get up and then move away from the desk, come back again, and then, um, you know, have a seat, just, just making sure that you're walking around a little bit during the day and doing some exercises if you know you're going to be sitting for long periods of time. I mean, this, this little talk has made me sit up, right? <laughs> I've been doing my, my foot pumping exercises while I've been sitting here. But it's also a reminder that there are um, 
class one or flight socks that are good for if you're sitting for long periods to think about um, uh, uh, compression socks or garments. You can get them simply from um, chemists, the boots, mark suspensors, as well as the medical, more medical grade ones. So having light support socks, um, especially when you're sitting for long periods during the day is a really good move. It's very simple. They look like pop socks um, and there are different um, uh, products out there. Um, I think our time is up, Fran. Oh. Um, so um, it was lovely. Uh, Wendy did a lovely little talk. It's a shame she couldn't be here for the mm -hmm. chat uh, because she's just so enthusiastic. Um, but thank you to the people that joined and, uh, and this will be on catch up. Yeah, thank you for the questions. Yeah, thank you very much. Have a great day and don't forget to look at the Legs Matter website and the, all the other amazing range of programme this week in the lounge. Thank you. Bye. Bye.